Hey everyone. So in last lecture, we talked about the concept of algebraic and geometric multiplicity, and I also stated this relation that geometric multiplicity is always less equal the algebraic multiplicity. But I didn't prove it in the last lecture. So today I am going to give you the proof. Okay. So for the sake of completion, uh, well, you can look the earlier lectures for more details. But just for the completion, let me just recall the definition of. these two terms and then we will go for the proof proof is very simple okay it won't take more than 3 to 4 minutes but yeah let's try to see the concept now suppose your t is a linear map from one vector space to the vector space v where v is a vector space of dimension n okay that means the basis will have n number of elements or you can also consider a matrix a of order n cross n so either a matrix will be given to you and if a matrix is not given and a linear transformation is given you take a basis and with respect to that basis you form the matrix how to do that i have already mentioned links you can find in the description so you have a matrix or a linear map and now you have eigen values for this matrix so suppose for this matrix you get 1 1 1 and 1 and say 7 7 7 7 so these are the eigen values So what is algebraic multiplicity? So algebraic multiplicity is always for the like eigen values. So algebraic multiplicity for lambda equal to one and algebraic multiplicity for lambda equal to seven. What are these numbers? They are nothing but the number of times that specific eigen value gets repeated. So here one is repeating four times. So algebraic multiplicity is four. Seven is repeating three times. So algebraic multiplicity for seven is three. Now what is geometric multiplicity? Now once you have eigen value say seven, once you have this eigen value, you find the eigen vector for the eigen value seven. Now once you have the eigen vector, question is how many of them are linearly independent? So number of linearly independent eigen vectors for the eigen value seven is called as the geometric multiplicity for lambda equal to seven. Similarly, you find number of linearly independent eigen vectors for lambda equal to 1 that will be the geometric multiplicity for lambda equal to 1 and what we are going to prove today gm is always less equal am so like here here it is 3 so geometric multiplicity will always be between 1 and 3 for lambda equal to 7 in this case once you have an see once you have an eigen value you will always get at least one eigen vector so your geometric multiplicity is always greater equal 1 and we are going to prove that it is less equal 3 so for seven eigen value you will either get one independent vector or two independent eigen vectors or three linearly independent eigen vectors okay so that's what the concept is and for lambda equal to 1 how many eigen vector Uh, linearly independent eigen vectors you will get you may get one or two or three or all four but not more than four for this case and not more than three for this case so this is what the concept is okay so let's start with the proof we have this these are the things we are having so let lambda be one specific eigen value like one or seven some fixed eigen value and let k be its geometric multiplicity that means for this eigen value we are having k linearly independent eigen vectors okay what we want to prove for this eigen value lambda is algebraic multiplicity is at least k it is at least k that means greater equal k okay now we what is given to us k is the geometric multiplicity that means what if i call a set b let me call b prime as say v1 v2 up to vk these are the vectors okay this is a subset of the vector space v now these are what these are lin these are linearly independent set and these are the eigen vectors for the eigen value lambda that means what if i apply t to v1 what i get lambda times v1 t of v2 is what lambda times v2 up to t of vk is lambda times vk because these are the eigen vectors for the same eigen value okay or you can also play with a a v1 is lambda v1 a v2 is lambda v2 and so on okay you can interchange a and t no problem at all now this is a linearly independent set now in vector space we have seen earlier that you can always extend this set to the basis for the vector space v now v is of dimension n therefore b prime i mean the basis for v will have n linearly independent vectors now this is my linearly independent eigen vectors for the eigen value lambda 
But okay, let's keep uh, eigenvectors aside. This is a linearly independent set. Let us ex extend this set so that it will form a basis for V. Okay, so I'm calling my B as a new set. So it will definitely having V1, V2 up to VK. Now you take VK plus 1. This is a vector, not an eigenvector. This is a vector in V. You choose this such a that it is not in the span of these vectors. That means VK plus 1 cannot be written as any linear combination of these k vectors. That means what this is, this set is a linearly independent. You take another vector, again I am saying it is a vector not an eigenvector. You take another vector from the vector space V and this is not in the span of first k plus 1 vectors. So therefore again this is an independent set. So you keep on adding the vectors which are not in the span of previous vectors. And therefore this set will form a linearly independent set. Since the dimension is n, this has n vectors, therefore this will form a basis. So this is a basis for the vector space V. Now once we have a basis, how one can form a matrix? So what you do is, you take a vector, you look at its image, you write down the coefficients as a column vectors. This also I have recorded earlier, you can see the link in the description. So what you do, T of V1, what is the image of V1? It is lambda V1 because it's an eigenvector. What is T of V2? It is again lambda V2 because it is an eigenvector. T of VK, VK is again an eigenvector, so this is lambda times VK. So let us try to write down the matrix along with this so that it will be more clear to you. Now what is the scenario? The scenario is T of V1 is lambda V1. So it is lambda V1 plus 0 times V2 plus 0 times V3 plus dot 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 0 times Vn. So first column will be lambda 0 0 0 0 till nth row. T of V2 is lambda V2. So this is 0 times V1 plus lambda times V2 plus 0 times V3 up to 0 times Vn till Vk. So again if I take the kth column 0 up to n. So if you observe I can just split over here and I can split over here. So I am having, oh this will be lambda. So I am having this k cross k, k cross k scalar matrix because the diagonals are lambda. So this is a scalar matrix of order k cross k and here everything is 0. Okay. Now what about t of vk plus 1? Now this is not an eigenvector, it is just a vector. Now see this is a basis, this can be written as some, uh, so you can say alpha 1 times v1 plus alpha 2 times v2 plus alpha n times vn. So what is what are the coefficients? Alpha 1, alpha 2 up to alpha n. Similarly your t of vk plus 2. Actually I should use a good notation. So like this is my k plus 1th column right. So first row and k plus 1th column. Second row and k plus 1th column. Nth row and k plus 1 column. So this is alpha 1, k plus 1, alpha 2, k plus 2, alpha n, sorry, k plus 1, alpha n, k plus 1. Like how do we write the entries of a matrix a11, a12, a13 and so on, right? So this I am writing in this way. Now what will be the second thing? vk plus 2, it will be some alpha first row, k plus 2 column, v1. Similarly, alpha n, k plus 2, Vn. You write down those entries over here. Similarly for T of Vn, you write those column vectors like that. So ultimately what you are having, you are having, if I see, this is a block matrix. This is one matrix. This is one matrix. This is one matrix. This is one matrix. Okay, so you can see, this is nothing but lambda times ik, k cross k identity matrix. This is some matrix B, some matrix C and the zero matrix. Now what is the characteristic polynomial C A of X or C T of X? It is nothing but characteristic polynomial for this matrix lambda I K of X into the characteristic polynomial for this C matrix. Now this is a scalar matrix. So that means only the diagonals are lambda, non-diagonals are zero. So what is the characteristic polynomial? It is X minus lambda. How many times? Definitely k times into this is some polynomial. Let me call it as g of x. Okay, so for this 
C matrix over here, you will have some polynomial. I am calling it as G of X. Now from here you can see how many times lambda is repeating. Your algebraic multiplicity for the eigenvalue lambda is how much? Definitely k times it is coming. For this polynomial, lambda may or may not come. If it doesn't come, algebraic multiplicity is k. If the lambda comes over here, definitely algebraic multiplicity is greater or equal k. So algebraic multiplicity will either be equal to k, number of times it is repeating, or greater than k if the lambda comes here as well. Okay, but what is your k? It is nothing but the geometric multiplicity for the eigenvalue lambda. Therefore, your algebraic multiplicity is always greater or equal geometric multiplicity. So proof is very simple. Once you have k linearly independent eigenvectors, you extend those linearly independent eigenvectors to the basis of a vector space. Once it is extended as a basis, you write down the image of the basis vectors and you form a matrix. Once you have a matrix, it's an upper triangular matrix. So characteristic polynomial is the product of these two blocks. But this is nothing but lambda repeats at least k times. And hence the proof is over. So I hope the proof is clear. If you have any doubt in any of the steps, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you.